Gorgeous, Tess. Thank you. Model Tess Holiday, known for her bright red hair and body positivity. She's amassed over 2 million followers on Instagram and major brand partnerships. But below the surface, Tess says she's been suffering with an eating disorder. I wasn't taking care of myself in the way I needed. I wasn't looking after my mental health in the ways that I should have. I was always making sure that everyone else's cup was full and I wasn't filling my own. So I think that's how I went so long without really being able to address you know, myself and my disordered eating. The 35-year-old mother of two says her decades-long disordered eating caught up to her in the last year. I would go all day without eating, and I would chalk it up to, I'm busy, I'm this. But the thing is, I had hunger pain all day, and I was sick all day. Oh, I'm busy, I'm a mom, I'm this, I'm working, I'll eat later, I'll eat later. But later never happened. And then at nighttime, you know, usually when my kids were in bed and I could settle, I would eat one meal and then I would go to bed. Holiday sought help and now says she has a form of anorexia, a revelation that has received some support as well as anger and skepticism. I am plus size, but advocating for diversity and larger bodies. And so I think for people hearing me say I'm anorexic was really jarring and hard and confusing. I've had a lot of messages from folks that are anorexic that are livid and angry because they feel like I'm lying. What do you want to say to people who don't believe you, who are skeptical when you say you're anorexic? To folks that don't believe me, you know, that I'm anorexic and that this is what I'm dealing with, um, it doesn't really matter. Because at the end of the day, this is my truth. If this resonates with you, if you need help, get help. If this helps you feel less alone, great. It's so much more powerful just to say, hey, I'm hurting. And if you're hurting too, that's okay. You know, you don't have to do this alone. Tess having the willingness to speak out about her experience, acknowledging some of the backlash that she is receiving is an indication of extraordinary bravery and an indication of, you know, her health and healing and some of her process. Tess confided in the counsel of Anna Sweeney, specializing in eating disorders, who says Tess has atypical anorexia. Atypical anorexia, which would imply the same physiological characteristics of anorexia nervosa, except for body size, accounts for anywhere between two and 4% of the population. Tess says it was her psychologist who initially diagnosed her, a shock, even for the model. I told the psychologist, well, I won't eat all day. You know, I'll maybe have like coffee or maybe I'll have, uh, you know, a handful of whatever's around me. And then at nighttime, I'll have my meal or snacks or whatever. So I thought that that meant that I was a binge eater, and the psychologist looked at me and said, you're anorexic. And then I just started crying. She says online hate played into her struggles. Yeah, I am a model, right? I am successful. I've been doing this for a long time. I've been talking about, you know, self-acceptance and, and loving yourself and fat acceptance for a long time but I still deal with it I still get people that make me feel like and that's okay because unfortunately it's going to take a long time to change society's um, ridiculous standards I have had people shouting at me my entire career that all I do is sit around and eat and I was starving I was literally starving and I didn't realize that that meant that I was anorexic. I didn't realize that I was mindfully restricting not eating. You're you know, saying I, you weren't purposely not eating in order to be skinny. If you're anorexic, it's a purposeful thing. I think I was almost punishing myself. And how long do you feel like you've been purposely punishing yourself? I've had an eating disorder since when my mom almost died when I was 10. That's when it happened. So from the age of 10 until now, I've struggled with disordered eating, with restrictive eating for the past decade. Eating disorders certainly do not occur for one simple reason. There are a million things that can go 
right for a person and one thing goes wrong and an eating disorder comes to fruition. And so certainly trauma can be an initiating factor. Eating disorders are extremely common and may affect nearly one in every 10 people. According to a study, about 9% of the U.S. population, almost 29 million people, will have an eating disorder in their lifetime. There's nothing but messaging that comes from the world that says the worst thing that can happen to you is you might live in, in a fat body. And so if everyone is efforting to be smaller, 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 and we know that that's just not possible for most people. You can't look at someone and tell whether or not they're healthy. You just can't. I understand that people look at me and I don't fit what we have seen presented as the diagnosis for anorexia. But then for me, that tells me that there's a larger problem, which I've been actually saying for years, is that we have a lack of diversity and representation in the world. Now, in recovery, Tess says she's on a healthier path, which for her includes three meals a day and a focus on the future. I have been happier in the last six months through my recovery than I've been in my entire life. I feel whole, I feel at peace, I really feel in my power for the first time. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.